It's my privilege to introduce my other two letters separated by a hyphen, buddy. Uh, Mike L.A. is known to all of us. Uh, he's one of a subset of us who's flown both shuttle and Soyuz. Three flights on shuttle, one on Soyuz, seven months on ISS as the commander. Um, speaks four languages. He's still working on English, but I'm, I'm betting that he can, he can get through this. So, uh, Mike, come on up. Buenos dias, dobro utra, and good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd like to echo Steve's words uh, and thank um, Bonnie and her team, Andy Turnage and his team, and of course, all the sponsors, and welcome all of you to the 32nd Planetary Congress of the Association of Space Explorers. Uh, we have um, quite an interesting week planned. Uh, I'm going to first read a piece of correspondence that came in from the office of the Vice President. Washington, D.C., dated today. I am delighted to send my warmest greetings to the 32nd Association of Space Explorers Planetary Congress and welcome all of the astronauts, cosmonauts, and space experts gathered from across the United States and around the world to Space City. Selected as host city of the fourth Planetary Congress convened in the United States, Houston holds an extraordinary place in America's storied history of space exploration. Today, Houston serves as an epicenter for training and education as part of President Donald Trump's renewed commitment to American leadership in space. For more than half a century, the Johnson Space Center has been at the forefront of America's journey to the stars, home to NASA's Astronaut Corps and the site of Mission Control Center that has guided every American crewed space expedition. In this 50th anniversary year of Apollo 11's lunar landing, we honor astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins for their courage, and we reflect with renewed inspiration on those immortal words that they left on the lunar surface, we came in peace for all mankind. I'm grateful for the Association of Space Explorers' enthusiasm to push the boundaries of space exploration and encourage students to pursue the all-important fields of science, technology, engineering, and math education. To each of you gathered for the 32nd Planetary Congress, thank you for your pioneering spirit to break old barriers, to set new records, and to inspire the next generation to rise to even greater heights and take another giant leap for mankind. I send my best wishes for a memorable week. Sincerely, Michael R. Pence, Vice President of the United States. Now would be a good time to clap. Next, I'd like to uh, introduce some remarks that are made by NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, which will appear behind me now. Welcome to the 32nd Planetary Congress of the Association of Space Explorers. We are honored that you have chosen to meet in Houston, Texas, the city synonymous with human spaceflight. I extend special greetings to the more than 100 astronauts and cosmonauts assembled here from around the globe. Your example of courage and commitment to the exploration of space inspires us to continue our efforts to reach into the great beyond. This conference's theme, Celebrating Apollo, Inspiring the Future, captures the spirit and determination of our forthcoming missions. NASA is fervently working to land the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024. We will then construct life-supporting architecture at the moon by 2028 to permit us to acquire the skills and knowledge to live on another world. But we can't do it alone. The Apollo Soyuz project, the Shuttle Mir project, and the International Space Station are all examples of how much our nations can achieve together. You are living examples of the benefits of those international collaborations. NASA invites your nations to again partner with us in the next chapter of human space exploration. What we accomplish on the moon through Artemis will enable us to take humanity's next giant leap forward to Mars. I applaud your mission to inspire youth 
as you reach out to schools and universities during your Congress. They are the Artemis generation. We need their bright young minds to help us overcome the challenges and dangers of space. Our 21st century space exploration missions are fast approaching. I look forward to hearing your ideas on how we should proceed into the future. Our collaborative effort, courage, and determination in missions past demonstrate there is no problem too great or challenge too difficult. I am confident that the Artemis program will likewise be successful because of what we do together. I send my very best wishes for a successful Congress. Thank you. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the association, we are a nonprofit professional and educational association uh, comprised exclusively of astronauts, cosmonauts, and commercial space travelers that have made at least one orbit of the Earth. We have over 400 members from 38 countries. Um, we have been in existence since 1985. And I'm often asked about my space flights, how was it to live in such a small, confined environment? How did you manage the interpersonal relationships and get along with each other? And especially, how did you do that with people from different countries, different cultures, different languages? And I think if you ask that question to the folks in the first few rows today, they would look at you maybe quizzically and shrug, and they would say, you know, you, you don't understand. We're not just colleagues. We're not just friends. We're family. And as a family, we get together. It could have been last year. It could have been five or even 10 years ago. And it's warm embraces and backslaps and stories that continue right where they left off. And this legacy is, is puts us in the midst of brothers and sisters, not brothers and sisters in arms, but rather in peace, in science, in technology, in research, and in conveying to the next generation messages of inspiration, in uh, concern about protecting our planet because we've all seen its fragility from space, and in promoting the benefits of international cooperation in science um, and space, human space exploration. So the association was founded in 1985 uh, by a small group of astronauts and cosmonauts and international flyers in Cernay, France. And I'd like to take a moment to ask those founding members that are in attendance to stand and be recognized. As Administrator Bridenstine mentioned, as did Mark Geyer, we've got six uh, folks upstairs on the International Space Station. And I'd like to uh, now introduce a video message from them, as well as three others who were there at the time, welcoming us here to the Congress. In July, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the first lunar landing the mission to send a crew to the moon and retain them safely to the Earth. It was a huge achievement, not only for NASA, but as well for all humankind. The Apollo program and the thousands of people who helped get us to the moon shaped a future for humans in space. For 50 years, we've built upon the human and technical achievements of the Apollo program, and we continue to do so here on board the ISS. We're gaining the knowledge and experience needed not only to return to the moon, but also to carry us beyond to Mars and other deep space destinations. We, as astronauts and cosmonauts, were inspired and enabled by the pioneers of space travel, many of whom are with you in Houston today. As we stand on the, sh on the shoulders of those giants, we hope that our work on board the International Space Station will likewise inspire and enable the next generation. 
future explorers will carry on the challenging but rewarding task of expanding the human presence in the solar system. From the crews of Expedition 60 and 61 on board the ISS, we wish you all the best for a very successful 32nd Planetary Congress of the Association of Space Explorers. So our theme today is celebrating Apollo and inspiring the future. A little over 50 years ago, we heard the words, Houston, Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. First word, Houston. So it's not surprising that we're here. It's a, a city that has a deep, rich, rich history with human space exploration and one that will continue on for many decades to come. A little while later, that same gentleman said, a small, one small step for a man and a giant leap for mankind. Keep in mind that this happened a little more than eight years after President John F. Kennedy first made public mention of this idea of going back to the moon or going to the moon and returning a man safely and before any of the following things had even been developed, a rocket to get there, a lander to get to the moon, anyone doing a spacewalk, or anybody having done a rendezvous in space. These are all technologies that were just on paper at the time. And he said, we're gonna do that because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. So this week, we look to celebrate those energies and skills. We're going to start with a retrospective and progressively move forward to what is required for the further exploration of the moon and beyond. We have eight technical sessions starting today, the impact of Apollo today and tomorrow, followed by medical challenges of flight beyond low Earth orbit for humans, a very nice uh, in-person account of the Apollo experience as told by not only the astronauts that were there, but also the teams on the ground. Forward to the moon, which is about the spacecraft and launch vehicles, some of which you see mocked up uh, to your left. Uh, that will hopefully take us there within the next five years. The next 50 years, what technologies and programs are feeding the greater goal? So these are uh, things like spacesuits, uh, lunar, commercial lunar um, payload service missions, and also some propulsion technology that will help us. Developing exploration technologies on the International Space Station. So these fine people that are aboard there are doing experiments and research in science and technology that will help us. Uh, spacesuit development, which we need. Uh, we've had a venerable couple of spacesuits, the Orlan in Russia and the EMU here in the United States, but neither of those is suited for working on the surface, so that needs to be done. And finally, we'll address some crew, crew issues like space traffic management and space situational awareness. What I'd like to do now is ask all of you to join me in a moment of silence to remember the fallen astronauts and cosmonauts uh, who have passed since our last meeting last September in Minsk. Thank you.
Thank you.